Hey, what's going on, y'all? Brother Knowledge coming at y'all. I know it's been a while since y'all seen me, but uh, just had a few things I want to talk with you about today. Uh, not going to be too long, but uh, hey, how you doing? Um, the time is now, man, for us to stop being so angry and, uh, you know, projecting that anger onto others. You know, that, that spreads like a, a wildfire and it, it, it hasn't helped us at all in our anger. But, uh, I mean, when we do stuff out of uh, anger, it doesn't help us at all. It really messes us up, messes our children up, you know, and it, it, it doesn't look good at all. It's not, a, it's not a good look at all. It really makes you look crazy. But um, I want to read the Father's Heart Ministry to you. So the Father says today, my fear insulates you from my wrath. When you choose the fear of the Lord, you ascend into my wisdom and into that rarefied atmosphere of ascendancy over every principality and power ranged against you. The counsel of the uniformed understate the reality of my wrath, but understand and know that my wrath exists. The father tells us his wrath does exist. It says, I hate evil with a perfect hatred, says the father. It is my wrath that necessitated the suffering of the cross. Now, understand, I know some of y'all are uh, believing that it's a cross, but it's not. Literally, uh, Yeshua or Jesus was hung from a tree. And if you don't believe me, go and look in the word. You can look in Galatians, I want to say chapter 3, verse 13, if I'm not mistaken. But also, the, um, you can look where Peter said that whom you hung from a tree, which is in uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 30. Uh, so I can't say a cross anymore. I mean, we've been conditioned so long to say a cross, but Yeshua was hung from a tree. Uh, the suffering I endured to open to you free and unrestrained opportunity to move from the place of wrath into the position of unmitigated and undiminished favor. This is not based on your worth or your accomplishments, but because of the work of the cross is what it says. 2,000 years ago, I poured out to the dregs, my full and complete wrath towards sin and the awful cost of transgression, all on your behalf and to your benefit. Accept my pardon and my mercy this day with a comprehensive understanding of all that is your portion of my goodness. Within the parameters of the applied work of the cross on your behalf, there is nothing to be found but the loving care of a benevolent father beyond those boundaries, those provisions of redemption. There is nothing but outer darkness. Purpose in your mind to stand in the earth as an ambas ambassador of the kingdom of light, where life is found for whosoever will. Bid them come from the highways and the byways, for this is the bridal season, and the supper of the great God is set. The attendants stand ready to serve up my bounty. Know that I have commissioned you and equipped you. This is your day of assignment. This is your season of fulfilling the destined purpose for which I sent you into time and space and from the hall of unrealized souls. Where you were kept in the heavens from before the foundation of the earth. I choose you this day, says the Father, and in your faithfulness I will recompenses or uh, recompenses you and accord and accord you a place at my table so the father is telling us basically man in a nutshell that the price was already paid a long time ago this says the cross but understand some people are not going to break down some people are not going to tell you the truth they're not going to Read you the fullness of what the word says. And when I look into the word, and I'm, I ain't talking no message Bible. I'm not talking um, uh, 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 NIV, ESV, uh, Amplified. I'm talking about from the King James Version. Now, we know that that's the King James Version 
is just a version of what the original context came from, which was a Hebrew uh, Bible. But when I see that and I read that and it said, whom you hung on a tree. Now, I'm going to go to the scripture for you because I'm going to break it down. Hold on. Give me one second. We're going to go to Galatians or Galatians first. Hold on. Let's see. Galatians. Oh, let me give y'all some music. I apologize, man. Hold on one second. Listen to Trail real quick. It's called I've Changed by the General. If you're ever looking for that song, it's called I've Changed by the General. He's from Oklahoma City. Hold on now. My Bible I started acting funny. Okay, this is what it says. Uh in the King James Version, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus or Yeshua HaMashiach, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay, so you can go look in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Now, again, we'll go over to uh, Acts also, Acts chapter 5, verse 30. And, and, and this is where Peter tells you what happened. Chapter 5, verse 30. When I read this, man... It, it, it like it, it broke my heart because I feel like I've been lied to all my life, you know, because I didn't go and study for myself, you know. And a lot, and I, a lot of um, preachers and teachers of the word that say that they are that, um, you know, it's just been passed down from generation to generation to generation, you know, the uh, what we would call the curse or the um, yeah, the curse. It's been passed down from generation to generation because none of them even studied to show themselves approved. Why is nobody telling us that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, was hung from the tree? Why? Why? Something don't make sense about this. Don't make any type of sense. And it's even in Galatians. But hold on. Here's Acts chapter 5, verse 30. It says, The God of our fathers raised up Yeshua, or Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Again, and it says, but Peter, this is verse 29, but Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. We rather obey God. We will obey God rather than obeying men or the ways of this world. And then it said, the God of our fathers raised up Yeshua, Jesus, whom you Murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgive and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these things. And Peter says, and we are the witnesses to those things that you did to Yeshua. We are the witnesses to the miracles that he performed. And we are the witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. One second. So does it skip. Okay. Yeah. So a, a lot of that, man, it's just, it's like, why, why wasn't we given this? Why wasn't we told this? Why, why was this information withheld from us? When I asked the question, I said, the reason that it's held for us what I feel in my heart of hearts is because they don't want you to know the truth of who you are. They don't want you to know that you are the original or you come from the original 
Hebrews. You were there in the beginning. You are the Hebrews. You are the Jews. You're not Jewish. You are the Jews. You are the Hebrews. But they've been calling us Gentiles all our life. We're not the Gentiles. When they heard this, they were furious. Now, when the people heard this, when they heard this, it's like, when they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. See, when they heard the truth, it made them furious. It made them angry because they was telling the truth. What did they say about the truth? The truth hurts. So they wanted to kill the apostles. They wanted to kill the disciples. Then one in the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel or Gamaliel, I would say that name, a teacher of the law held in respect by all the people and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. So this man stood up. Now, remember, I, we, we, we touched on this subject before when we did the uh, Book of Acts challenge. But I'm going back over it with you because this, this is truth. This is what we need to know. So this guy then says, hold on. All right, let's, let's take a recess. You know, let's take a recess. Let's, I got to talk to y'all real quick. So this is what uh, the lawyer says to them. Now, Gamaliel is a teacher of the law held in respect by all the people and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. So, you know, like when you in court, they say court in session or we're going to take a, a recess. This is what they did. They took a recess. And he said to them, men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. Hey, be careful that you don't touch these men. Be careful. For some time ago, Thutius rose up claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, joined him. He was slain and all who, who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished and all who obeyed him were dispersed. So he's talking about people who were obeying man, who were, who were worshiping these men, who were believing what they were saying. He's talking about them dying, but then check this out. And now I say to you, keep away from these men. Keep away from these men and let them alone. Let them be. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. So he's saying like, basically, if this is of men, if it's just like the ones that I just talked about, then it will come to nothing. But this is what he said. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it. You cannot tear it down. You cannot touch them, lest even you be found to fight against God. What that means is you will be trying to fight against God. And lest means the fear of, the reverence of, the respect of. So don't be fighting against God's people. Don't be fighting against God's people that's giving you the word, that's giving you the truth, that's giving you the wisdom and the knowledge that, you know, the Lord has given them, that they have sought out. And they agreed with him. And when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, so now they called them back. All right. They agreed with him because, again, this man knew that if this is of God, you better not touch it. Don't touch them. Don't touch God's people. But if it's of men, it's going to come to nothing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to do like everything else, man. It's going to die. So now they're agreeing with him. Okay, we agree with you, but we're going to beat them up first. We're going to beat them up and tell them they need to stop this madness. Check it out. And they agreed with him. And when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Yeshua or Jesus and let them go. 
So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. They went away happy <laughs> and daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Yeshua HaMashiach or Jesus Christ. So they kept on doing God's work. They kept on doing it. Now, what am I saying to y'all that are watching? I'm telling you, keep on doing God's work. God's work. Keep on spreading the gospel, the good news of peace. Keep on spreading that. Keep on doing that, man. And I ain't talking about for no money, for no fame, or nothing like that. I'm telling you, because, man, shh, they ain't going to be able to touch you with a 10-foot pole. Be happy with spreading the news, spreading the good news, and helping somebody else learn the truth, learn their history, their true history. It's very important. It's very vital for all of us. Now, what I was discussing today, I had to talk with my nephew because I'm, I'm telling everybody, not just my nephew, but I'm, I'm hoping that this reaches some coaches and this reaches some of the coaches' uh, players. The time is now, man. The time is now to stop telling these kids to go out there and knock somebody's you-know-what in the dirt. Y'all know what I'm talking about. To go out there and take his effing head off. Nah. It's time. It's not time for that anymore. I know we enjoy looking at, you know, the players do that to one another, man. But you got to think about that player has a home to go to, may have a, a, or they do have a family to go to. Even in the NFL, they have a wife and kid to go home to. They out there to get a check just like you. And they're not out there. They shouldn't be out there trying to kill one another, trying to take each other's head off. They shouldn't be doing that. If you knock somebody down, pick them up. Players, to the high school players, the, the uh, middle school players, the elementary players, the NFL players, the NCAA. I mean, I'm not NCAA. The, uh, yeah, NCAA. I know that went backwards, but to elementary, middle school, high school, college players, NCAA, and the NFL. Begin to pick each other up, man. You knock somebody down, pick them up. Don't try to kill them, man. Just, you know, hit them and then pick them up. Be your brother's keeper, man. Because you never know what somebody going through. Everybody ain't no celebrity. All they business ain't out there. It could be people at home right now that's dealing with somebody that may be going through a, a COVID, a coronavirus situation. The passing of their mother, the passing of their father, somebody passing away, somebody suffering. And they out there to make a career because... They want to make their mother or their father proud. The problem is a lot of people won't say that because coaches don't teach that. They teach a lot of hatred out there on the field. To hate the person way across the field. And that's messed up because we ain't supposed to hate. We're not supposed to be hating them. We're supposed to hate the sin, not the person. Coaches don't teach that. They teaching, what do they call that when they uh, give them a, uh, they teaching bounty. They teaching bounty. Hey, take them out, man. I got something for you. Nah, man. These scouts need to be looking for integrity, for good character, for good sportsmanship on and off the field. Because we know what you can do on the field. Yeah, okay. But what do you do off the field? Are you that type of player? Are you that type of man? Good sportsmanship on and off the field. Because look at the players that you have picked up now. We see players that have anger problems, that beat their women, that get drunk and think that they can just do whatever they want to do, get high and think that they can just do whatever they want, like they have no regards. Yeah. It's time to start looking at not just what they are on the field, but look at who they are on the outside. Hey, man, I hope that this message blessed somebody, you know, and I really do. I want coaches to start encouraging their players to pick each other up and stop teaching them to hate somebody across the field because that could be your cousin. That could be your brother. It could be your family member. You never know. 
But again, it's about picking each other up. And that's not just in the sports world. That's even when you at the store, when you, whatever you do, wherever you at, man, if you see somebody down, pick them up. You know what I'm saying? Give them some word of encouragement. Tell them everything is going to be okay. Tell them to put their trust in God. Because your problems is not bigger than the God that we serve. Our Heavenly Father, Abba Father, our Creator, who created us all. Amen. I love y'all. Blessings to y'all. Knowledge.